All right, welcome everyone. My name is Robin E. Oh, I am the executive director for uh, downtown Santa Barbara, and we are so excited to have another episode of the Downtown Business Spotlight, a uh, weekly interview series highlighting downtown business owners. Um, today, my co host with The Independent is Charles Donnellan, who is a senior arts editor at the Santa Barbara Independent, and we are going to be talking about First Thursday happenings uh, this evening and also celebrating some significant milestones um, with the Waterhouse Gallery. So Charles, I'm going to hand it over to you to get the conversation started. Thanks for hosting today. Thank you, Robin. Always good to see you and uh, welcome. Um, I see Alexandra Terry from the Museum of Contemporary Art, Santa Barbara, where she is Chief Curator. Hi, Alexandra. Hi. Uh, we have Ralph and Diane Waterhouse of Waterhouse Gallery in La Arcada. Hi, Ralph and Diane. Hi. Hi. Thanks for including us. You're very welcome. And uh, we have Andy Garcia. Hi, Andy, who is the leader of the Art Walk um, and has been for a number of years and also is a wonderful art critic and writer and uh, uh, just a very important person in our art ecosystem, a uh, supporter of <laughs> all you, kinds Charles. of initiatives. So thank you for being here. And uh, <laughs> thank you for, for taking people around to all the galleries. It's a really important thing. Super fun. Um, I'm gonna start uh, by asking everybody right now just to say something about what people can expect if they're gonna go out later on tonight. I thought, let's just mm -hmm. get, that, get that rolling right away. So. Um, Maybe I'll come back to uh, Ralph and Diane and ask you, um, it's first Thursday again, how's, how's that going down in La Arcada? We're gonna have a guitarist and a violinist tonight. So we're gonna have wonderful music. So pop in and, and give them a listen. Ralph's oh, gonna be fantastic. doing a painting demonstration. So you're gonna have art and music. Yay, live art. Ralph, you're gonna <laughs> paint in front of the First Thursday crowd, two music. Yeah, yeah I'm going to set up in the um, inside the gallery. Uh, set my easel up, my outdoor easel that I use when I go plein air painting. I'm going to set it up in here, and I'm going to work obviously from an image that I have collected. So I'll be working from a photograph I've taken, and I will do a painting and that, and, and talk people through what I'm doing whilst I'm doing it. I love it. It's and such start, a I'm going to start about quarter of six. Uh -huh. So um, I'll start set up and then we'll start about that. So I still don't know what I'm going to paint yet, but um, uh -huh. I'll surprise myself. <laughs> oh, very good. I love the uh, demonstrations, especially from you masters of representation, because I think it really um, it helps people recognize that this is not just a magic trick, that it's a human being <laughs> who follows right. the process and that it's, it's accessible. I mean, uh, I've seen, especially young people, um, they watch somebody who, like you, has a lot of experience. They see the kind of process that you engage. And uh, the next thing you know, they've got paints. So I hope you inspire some, some new artists tonight. Inspire some competition. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, Alexandra, um, what's happening at MCA on uh, first Thursday? Hi, thank you so much for having me. And I wanted to thank downtown organization for the invitation and Charles for leading this. And so thrilled to be amongst such wonderful company and beautiful art community leaders in Santa Barbara. Um, yeah, first Thursday, we are hosting our curated cocktails, which we host every first Thursday. Um, we just opened an exhibition on the 23rd of October featuring Rosha Yagmai. Mm -hmm. It's an exhibition called Drifters. Um, so we hope that you'll come see it if you haven't had an opportunity to see the exhibition yet. We will have a special cocktail inspired by the work. And tonight we're gonna to be hosting a hands-on workshop led by Rebecca Haas, who has recently opened um, Ink Paper Crafts on State Street. So we're really excited to have more creative folks in the community and um, come by, see some work, hear some music, cocktail and crafts. I love it. That is really a, a triple threat there with the new show, <laughs> the craft activity, and the specialty cocktail. That's pretty impressive. What are the hours um, for MCA tonight, for Museum of Contemporary Art tonight? 
Our bar will start around six, but we're going to be open on Thursdays. We're always open through to 8 p.m. So we'll be open uh, so from five to eight. But if you want that cocktail, come around six. Yeah, very good. Yum! <laughs> and Andy, are you doing the walk tonight? I'll dash over before I stop my uh, <laughs> demo. <laughs> no. Hi, Andy. Um, oh, gosh. So, first of all, we're going, we're actually planning on going to both Waterhouse and to the MCA. Very good. But just to break it down, so um, tonight we, we, congregate at 5.30 at Santa Barbara um, Museum of Art Steps, and we're going to enjoy some of that um, Opera Santa Barbara tunage that's happening there. Uh, we have a date with Inga at Sullivan Goss and her opening, so nice. I'm stoked on that. Uh, she's one of those artists that Nathan and I, when we first started The Crawl, um, she was one of the shows that was like off the beaten path and kind of really inspired her and Benet Rivera and some of the art shows that she would do kind of inspired the art crawl because it was first like just kind of the outsider off the beaten path that weren't necessarily reflected on the map. But now it's 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 really opened up. So we're going to go see Inga at 530. I reached out to her and so she's going to meet with my little group that hopefully will get a good number. Um, and then we're going to Plaza uh, Granada because they just took down the barriers and opened right. up the mural. And so I reached out to those two artists and they're going to meet with our group. So we're going to get an exclusive little chat with them. Uh, we're going to hit, um, I like to go some of the new, newer spots too and kind of explore. And so we're going to hit uh, Courthouse Tavern and hopefully have a, a beverage and see some prints that are there. Uh, by Claudia Breton, I think. Yeah. Um, and then we're heading to La Cata. We're going to do um, wa uh, Waterhouse because he's going to be out, Ralph's going to be out there doing some live art. And so live art's always like a really good plus and interactive. Our crawl's about like really engaging the community and getting them to really get one with the art. Of course, they can go online and see all kinds of images, images, but there's nothing like seeing it in person. And so we try to, I try to enhance that by having some one-on-ones and some chats with either the proprietors, the gallerists, or um, the artists. So uh, Ralph will probably be tapping on your shoulder and asking you some <laughs> questions. That's fine. Um, I love that itinerary. That's yeah. amazing. Oh so many, my gosh. Interesting things, So many good stops. And I want to come back and talk a little bit about it. I saw okay. um, Inga's show earlier this week and it's fabulous. And she has an amazing story. And I think she's uh, such a great example of um, how creative the community is at this time. Um, right. She's a really wonderful success story. Um, everybody has been affected to some degree or another. And Andy, I'm really taking off from what you're doing. The art crawl, is also now an art promenade or a yeah. promenade or promenade. <laughs> 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 tell me, um, and I'm going to start with you, but I want to hear from everyone. Um, how has the promenade affected the art crawl? Um, you know, it's kind of interesting because we just kind of picked up the art crawl again. Um, yes. You know, just because first that. Thursday has only been back for what a couple of times. Right. So uh, the fourth, I think. Yeah. So the, the promenade, um, so me personally, I hadn't really explored a lot of that. I was really good at um, kind of keeping myself distanced and isolated and I was a 76 year old mom. But what it's happening, because I've also, um, we're gonna be doing some of that is I reached out to some of those artisans that are out there. Yeah, sure. And um, to kind of explore that, like there's a chocolatier out there that we're gonna know, hopefully talk to. So. You know, the, the thing um, with our art crawl, Car Charles, is that um, we get a lot of brand new people to Santa Barbara. Yes. So we, it's that, it's artists, it's just people that want to rediscover. And so we kind of do a little bit of everything. So cool. the promenade, I think, will kind of add to that interactive. Um, I try to encourage, um, you know, sales and right kind of build that up. It's always nice when we get art sales during the art crawl that's happened a couple of times. Ooh, and right. I've been Absolutely. stoked on that. 
And so the promenade kind of adds that to it. And then it also adds to their experience. They take a little bit of Santa Barbara, a little bit of that night, and they get to take it home with them. Mm -hmm. So it, it has kind of enhanced the, the yeah. what we're trying to do out there. I guess that's a question that's um, still being answered, right? Right. But I know, let's go to uh, Ralph and Diane. How about um, for you folks, Have you've, you've already experienced just because of your day-to-day, -day, um, your location, uh, the promenade, it's had a positive impact, is that right? I'm sorry, like Having you're saying closed the traffic, first Thursdays? Uh, for you, just generally speaking, has that had an impact on the gallery? The, uh, the fact that people are walking around on State Street now? Oh, we've noticed an increase in traffic. A lot of tourists. I have two people in today from Minnesota. We always get a lot of people from Los Angeles. So it's picking up. I think people are so happy that COVID's on the way out. And right. We right. can go back to, to normal, normal. So maybe it's a combination of things. It's not just the promenade, but it's also the fact that people are feeling more comfortable and most people have been vaccinated. Some of us right. have even been boosted at this point. Mm -hmm. um, Alexandra, how is it going with um, Paseo Nuevo? I noticed the other night when I came by, um, and I, I've seen the, the, the Rosha Yagmi um, show. I, I came in and got a chance to look at it, and it's an amazing installation. And I want to hear a little bit more, and I want to work with you to, to give people a feeling for how thoroughly that space has been transformed. But before we go there, maybe just say a couple of words about um, what Paseo Nuevo is doing, because there's quite an interesting uh, Maker's Fair on yeah. uh, what has always been a promenade there, the uh, the interior. Um, exactly. Center like with La Arcata too. Go ahead. It's it's great. I mean, the I think the fact that so many people are visiting State Street in the way that they are has certainly mm -hmm. led to much higher attendance for us. I mean, you know, we were closed for months and months as everyone was. We had an exhibition that was on for well, on was in our space for 10 months. Um, we were closed, but upon reopening, we've had, we've exceeded attendance levels every oh, that's day. So great. So that's good. I think it's, yeah, we're thrilled. I think big part of it obviously is that people are excited to be out again. They missed connecting with one another and seeing art, which I hope, you know, we can just continue to allow them to come in and see the work. But certainly the promenade has has um, made a difference and the way that Paseo Nuevo has adapted. You know, yes. they're amazing supporters. We love them. They they support us so much. They We use some of their spaces for pop-up exhibitions. We're going to be hosting a holiday pop-up shop um, in 705 Paseo Nuevo. So they're wonderful supporters oh, nice. of the museum. And as you mentioned, there's the Maker's Fair and just so much creativity and people exhibiting the work that they've been putting in. Maybe they've been doing it before the pandemic. Maybe the pandemic inspired something, um, but it's really a wonderful atmosphere. So I'm gonna ask about something specific, but I wanna also pull um, Andy in on this. Uh, one of the coolest things I think you can do right now in the Paseo Nuevo, you know, it's always been fun to have your picture taken on the tile steps. And that is still clearly oh, yeah. happening pretty strong. But now you've also got the amazing mural that right. is out onto that roof parking lot. And that yeah. is one of my favorite pieces of public art ever anywhere. I just think it came out so well. So maybe you can talk about that for just a minute and tell people who, who the two artists were and, and what the initiative was, because that was a partnership with Paseo Nuevo, is that correct? It was, it was um, a, actually quite a big group partnership. So, yeah. you know, during the pandemic, we weren't open, we weren't able to invite people into our space, but we knew that it was imperative to be bringing contemporary art to the public, but also to continue to support our local artists. So along with the CEC, the Community Environmental Council, uh, right. Paseo Nuevo, the Arts Fund and B-Cycle, we all came together to um, host an open call for artists in Santa Barbara County to create artwork around Earth Day of last year. And it was inspired by climate leadership. And through this open call, um, we had a panel that in included all of those partners, but also a couple of community um, art partners. We selected a an artist duo, which is Adriana Arriaga and uh, Claudia Borfiga. 
And for those of you who haven't visited, it is just such a heartwarming, beautiful, fun piece of work. It's huge. I mean, it's 20 feet tall, 60 feet wide, um, and it's accessible. Basically, it's the backside of MCASB. So it's yes. accessible through the top level of the Pase Nuevo parking garage. And I think every time I walk outside to, you know, use the restroom or wherever I'm going, someone's out there photographing themselves. It's a really fun spot to take a selfie or take a group photo. Really yes, cool. it's a big, beautiful, colorful grid Absolutely. of all kinds of interesting items that are somehow or other symbolic of what is great about our community. And uh, I love both of those artists. I think they did an amazing job of kind of solving that problem of, of how to make something that is going to be, like you said, kind of warm and welcoming, but at the same time is sophisticated and contemporary and yeah. also incredibly photogenic. So that is super cool. I love that piece. And I was, you know, so um, touched by the uh, way the community came together and organized that and executed it when we were still all pretty stuck. You know, that was uh, back when things were not all the way open yet, but it was uh, still able to be done. And coming by and seeing them as they worked on it was also fabulous uh, because it was a big job. It was a huge job and yeah. a big, big process. And there were community volunteers who yes. helped paint. Yeah. We had high school students, family members, so awesome. friends. It was just a really great opportunity to bring folks together. Yeah, it might be, I don't know, Robin, is it the biggest work of art, public work of art downtown? It's pretty big. No, it's, it's probably pretty close if it's not the largest and it's certainly the newest. So that is really special. And maybe Andy, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening in the Granada Courtyard? Is that the official name? What do we call that space? Uh, I think it's just, it's, it does have a special name. Um, I know that it's still developing. Um, one of my gigs is I'm actually a front of the house assistant there at Granada now. Yes. So I'm getting the whole inside scoop little by little, but I think it's just for now Plaza Granada. Plaza and they Granada, just, yeah and they just took down those barriers and I, I hadn't had an opportunity and I walked by it the other day um, as I was smelling Molly's delicious food and, um, and um, the, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, it just enlivens that space, that walk space and, you know, they have it lit so we can actually see it and enjoy it. And I didn't know much about it. So I, I thought it was, about time to invite a couple of those artists just for my own. And then I thought, oh, I'll just do it during art crawl. So we'll be, we'll be checking them out. Um, I think we have our date at 6.30 tonight with them. So for people watching at home, there is an open area behind the Granada, between the Granada and the garage. Um, I guess um, the buildings on one side are the uh, um, first block of East Victoria Street, like where Art Essentials is. and. Anyway, that is a spot that I will say personally, I've coveted since the Granada opened, whenever that was like 12 years ago. I remember coming out of an event and heading back to the garage and stopping and looking around and saying, wait, I wanna promote parties in this space. Right. <laughs> so it's taken a long time for it to come online, but now we're ready, you know, uh, um, let's, uh, let's get some ideas floated for how to activate that area because Santa Barbara is such, um, an incredible opportunity for things to happen outdoors. Uh, and I think that's one of the silver linings of what we've all just been through is that it has forced us <laughs> to consider how we can continue to pursue exciting outdoor opportunities. Uh, Ralph and Diane, the musicians, are they going to be in the gallery with you, Ralph? They'll be inside. Be the They'll be inside. They're inside too. Yeah. And now, around about quarter of six. Uh, yes, quarter of six. Excellent, excellent. And uh, and is is this? Uh, can you tell us their names? Uh, it's they... Luz Paventa, who's the yeah. guitarist, and I oh, wow. remember the violinist name. No, but she, she she's she's terrific. Yeah, she's I think she used to play. She's French at O'Malley's. Great. With Lou years ago. Yeah. You might recognize her. Um, Maybe. Yeah, she's she's uh, they create a wonderful duo. Lou will start and probably spend the first. Our playing on his own, and she's going to she's going to join him a little later. But uh, when she comes in, the whole atmosphere just rises because you know she she plays that violin and she 
she's got that like super French jazz feel, and it's it's just amazing. Oh, wow. It just literally oh, uh, has to... Django Reinhardt, Stefan Grappelli. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And I'll be painting yeah. away there, listening to it. So my brush might be flying all over the place. Who knows? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Um, Robin, are the pianos still on State Street or is that over after the end of I October? believe they are still there, right, Robin? <laughs> Actually, I think that they were um, picked up on the 24th yeah. of October. So oh, they okay. just finished recently, but there certainly still are a ton of different exhibits happening and that they are not there, but there is a, a band going to be playing tonight on uh, State Street called uh, Out of the Blue at Thousand Block of State Street. And then mm -hmm. 26 different venues will be participating this evening and I, I did put the link um, in the chat for anyone who's watching with us live for all of the different venues that are available. So um, just in, for the sake of uh, having even a kind of informal plan for the rest of our time, I think I'm just going to make a, a little sketch outline and we can still move things around. Um, I would like to go to Alexandra next and talk a little bit with her about the current show of Rosha Yagmai uh, Drifters. Um, then I'd like to talk to Ralph and Diane about their history in Santa Barbara and with their space. I had a great conversation in preparation earlier this week with Diane and just want to touch on a couple of those stories that we, uh, we talked about the other day. And then finally, Andy, um, I want to come back around to you because you're going to spend some time at Sullivan Dawes tonight and in particular, you've organized it to meet up with Inga. And I thought since we've both seen that show, it might be fun for us to converse a little bit about her work. And she's somebody that it sounds like you go back with her, um, as do I. Uh, so that'll be fun. All right. Yeah, uh, Andra, is everybody pretty comfortable with that sequence? And you know, sure. you things start going a different direction. That's all right. Um, <laughs> Alexandra, this is a, a really, I think, a fascinating example of how ambitious contemporary artists are in relation to installing their work. Because, well, maybe you can <laughs> take it from there because she doesn't yeah. just put her picture on the wall and walk away. That's exactly. not how she operates. Well, <laughs> as you know, Charles, I, curatorially speaking, it's really exciting for me to transform our space and to create an environment. Um, yeah. really to work with the artists that we are exhibiting to give more of an insight into their greater practice by having something that's perhaps immersive or exploratory. And so with Rosha, you know, she didn't um, let us down in creating a new sort of an environment. Um, for those of you who have who may have seen the exhibition, when you walk in, one of the first things you notice is these very large granite rocks in the space. And, um, you know, from a behind the scenes perspective, I'll tell you that it took a lot of planning on our end. Um, you know, we have a small but mighty team and we really do everything pretty much ourselves. And so from figuring out what machinery we needed to move those rocks around to, you know, conducting traffic as we drove a forklift up a, Paseo Nuevo parking garage, we, we got the rocks in. Um, and I think they look great. Uh, they're really exciting. It's a little mini Joshua tree. You exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. <Love. laughs> uh, the rocks are really a compliment to the work themselves. They're, they're not artworks and um, they're just an interesting sort of environment builder that also counterbalances the work that's in the space. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but Rosha Yagmai, she is an LA-based artist. She really considers herself to have a sculptural, a studio-based practice that's, that revolves around sculpture. And she uses a lot of industrial materials, a lot of found materials, building materials. So you'll see a lot of that in the space. There, there are rusted and corroded pipes that have been welded together. There are the, you know, the found rocks. But for this exhibition, she is showing a body of work that is fairly new. Uh, she only has exhibited it once before at her gallery in LA, Kane Griffin Gallery, and that was only a few months ago. Um, it's a series called After Images, and it is takes on themes of Rocha's work that she's been exploring for quite some time, which has to do with distortion, um, disorientation, altered perception, 
and she has a long fascination with psychedelia and not just psychedelic drugs, but you know the visual culture of psychedelia and the sort of promise of psychedelia to be something that provides an opportunity for transcendence. And Iranian, um, sorry, Irosha, who is an Iranian American, has taken up this, this series after images as a way to explore her historical lineage and a culture that she was almost born into, but um, became something that was not in the background and not secondary by any means, but something that she doesn't fully consider her primary culture. And, you know, my, my I'm half Iranian as well. And so um, having these really interesting conversations with Rosha about where we belong in culture, um, how Iranian are we, how American are we, and how much does the past, the, the past of historical Persia belong to us, considering we were not born there and it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's sort of secondary. So Alexandra, I hope you will forgive me, but, and, and I'm gonna try not to go too far with the spoilers. Okay. But for our audience, I am going to describe a little bit more what to expect when they enter the MCA for the show Drifters. So there's these fairly large rocks. They're not quite boulders, but they're baby boulders maybe. <laughs> and they, they force you to kind of move a little differently through the space. So also does the large curved wall which has been installed in the main gallery space at MCA, which is not the natural or whatever you want to call this, the wall that's, that's behind it. And that allows the artist to both hang these uh, psychedelic artworks, which by the way, are really cool. I'm not sure what the uh, um, technique is, what the, 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 the um, material is that creates the effect. But if ever, when you were a little kid, you used to get those toys, sometimes they come in like Cracker Jacks and it would be a little cartoon figure and you twist it and the eyes would move because if you looked at it from a different angle, it was kind of a little plastic. And it's got this moiré is I believe the technical term for it um, surface that changes as you change in relation to the uh, um, picture. So there's that going on, these things that are kind of shifty and uh, intense to look at and have very um, complex surface and depth issues, uh, but there's also behind that wall and also in the gallery to the right as you enter, there are, um, I believe they're salvaged pipes that look like they're what should be in someone's basement or behind someone's washing machine or maybe even in an industrial setting or something. And for what it's worth from my one visit so far, I felt like I was almost seeing someone's meditation on not just what should be on the walls of a gallery, but what it takes for a gallery to have walls and what it takes for a space to be a place where art can be shown. It can't be the desert and it can't be behind the wall, but she somehow made it possible for you to see those things in the exhibition at the same time. Anyway, wonderful amazing, ambitious, like I said, right at the outset, um, exhibition that teaches people not just about what the latest fad might be in terms of making a painting, but also about how artists are thinking about everything, their heritage, their opportunities, the spaces in which they <laughs> exhibit. And, you know, even I felt like it was also on some level about the climate. Absolutely, thank you so much, Charles. Great. Um, Ralph and Diane, 37 years in Santa Barbara, and I believe it's all in La Arcada. Is that correct? Or was 30, there another 30 years in La Arcada. 30 years in La Arcada. And um, connections to not just a beautiful and wide array of wonderful representational artists, but also, I believe, Ralph, through your background, to um, some pretty amazing art and art historical figures, historical figures, because inside their gallery, they've got a little, I call it the, the private, the personal gallery, where they have photographs. And I saw pictures of you both with David Hockney and Margaret Thatcher. 
And yes. I am, <laughs> if I'm wrong, two boys on the same night. Same night. Yes, the same night. Yeah. So maybe uh, I, that wasn't much of a question. <laughs> Ralph, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, about what it's been like to um, be a British, I assume, uh, some art education would appear. And then to come. Actually, I did not. No. I did attend art school for a brief period of time, but. Uh, I, I became a gra full-time graphic designer very quickly on leaving school. Oh, very good. And I went through the old system of you were actually an apprentice, you know, uh, working uh -huh. in the company and got the formal training. So I got the training on the, in those days. It was, a, it was a, a lithographic and letterpress company. So I got to work on, see things, how they worked on the shop floor, how they, the type was put together, how the, everything was set up. And so it was a wonderful learning experience. And I, I continued um, from working in print to going on to uh, working in an advertising agency in Scotland. I worked in Scotland mm -hmm. for about five years with the National Advertising Agency there, and then came back to Yorkshire where I was born and um, sort of started painting part-time as a hobby. Um, then went I, I went full-time as, um, I, I got a, a, quite a large client, um, this is the story of how I really got to start painting full time. I got, a, 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 I got a client, a supermarket chain, and I was their sole um, graphic designer. So I used to handle the whole area for them. I used to open stores, bring in TV personalities and all that sort of thing. And then one day they got purchased by another company. The company came in and said, we want to do everything in house. Well, I hadn't worked inside a, a company for probably 10 years at that time. So I said, no. I'm not going to do that. Thank you very much. I've been painting in my spare time. I'm going to try it and see if I can make a living. And so here he I, is. Here I am. But I think by accident, I happened wow. to start at a time when um, ordinary people were starting to purchase art for their homes. And um, so without knowing it, I, I kind of, I was lucky at the time I started and I managed to, I did quite well. And, um, and then, you know, just kept going. And, uh, used to do wildlife and then switched to painting landscapes about 25, 30 years ago. And um, I worked both plein air and in the studio. More in the studio now, the older I get, I must have it. And it's, it's <laughs> so important to the cultural identity of Santa Barbara, the plein air landscape tradition here. Um, and I think it's intertwined with a whole bunch of different things because you know, we had a whole kind of Western art movement that was uh, popular in Santa Barbara in the early 20th century. Uh, we had yeah, some absolutely. pretty impressive yeah. uh, painters who came here from the East Coast and I think found Santa Barbara to be an important place for them when they were looking to the East. Uh -huh. um, you know, I think of uh, uh, Lockwood de Forest, for example, somebody who spent a lot of time in Asia and in India collecting uh, um, art there, but then also painted a whole lot of Santa Barbara uh, seascapes. Um, mm -hmm. But it's fabulous to be able to come to the iconic La Arcada in the shadow of the Santa Barbara Museum of Art. Well, not really in the shadow, but next door to it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then see the kind of work that I think a lot of people do associate with Santa Barbara, which is the wonderful um, plein air uh, works. Yes. I know you're doing an event um, coming up with a couple of more people who are going to do demonstrations. Do you want to describe that a little bit, Diane? You told me about this. On um, Saturday, November 20th, we'll be celebrating our 37th anniversary. We're going to have six oh, wow. artists painting in the courtyard. And uh, one of them will be uh, Thomas Van Stein, Craig Nelson, Joe Wang, who's a master in the oil painters of America, uh, Willis Heaton, Craig Nelson. It's going to be so amazing. Just come and watch from one to four to see them Great. work. And, spend, and then we'll have a reception from four to 6.30. And spend some time in that beautiful La Arcada, yes. and the turtles and hanging by the <laughs> fountain. Um, it's such a great um, public space. It uh, is. Yes. It's, it's been a privilege and an honor to be in here California. Our home. And you are <laughs> holding it down right on the corner there. Uh, Andy, let's talk. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. 
Oh, definitely. I just wanted to say that I, I, uh, I appreciate the Waterhouse Gallery because um, it holds some of my favorite art here in town. Thank um, you. I've also appreciated um, the support that you've given Derek Harrison. Oh, um, we love Derek. He's Derek. like our, our son. <laughs> He's amazing. Um, I, I showed a few of his real early works here in Santa Barbara and just to see his progress and moving uh -huh. forward. But, and that was always good to see, like he was reaching out to LA and he spent time in LA. But what I really appreciate is that he has a home here in Santa mm -hmm. Barbara, not only for his own studio, but also for Water Waterhouse. So I appreciate that. Well, you're Thanks. so kind to say that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we, you. We he's actually, a nice he's a young very, man. very talented young man and he's growing every day. His talent yes. grows right. every day. He's a very dedicated painter. Yeah, he's amazing. He's really great. Um, Thank yeah, you. I also That's wanted great. to say I appreciate MCA. Um, one thing about MCA is that when when people ask me to kind of describe it, I say it's a small space with that always holds a bold statement. It's <laughs> like just really dead. I mean, just to mention the the mural that that Charles brought up and um, MCA has traditionally done that. One of my good friends, Alex Poli, who is known as Man One, he's a uh, a uh, graffiti artist in Los Angeles. He had the opportunity to do a mural there as well. Um, and then some of the exhibits that we've had, uh, we've been able to experience there have just been like really great. I spent lots of time in Los Angeles and sometimes in San Francisco. And it's always nice to have that global aspect at the MCA, um, but also giving those opportunities to our locals, which is, which is so important, so. Thank you, Alexander, for Thank your you. tradition. That's great. Thank you so much for making that connection for us. Um, oh, wait, I'm not done then. But then there's Charles <laughs> Donnellan. Oh, let's just give the shout outs where shout outs are due. Then there's Charles Donnellan. Um, I've really appreciated your writing. I've really appreciated your attention to the arts, um, you know, it's nice to see you in and out of uh, the Granada, but you also have um, paid attention to visual arts. When I had a very teeny space in Artiamo, which was uh, where French press was, you popped in there and did a little write up on an art show that I that I hosted there. So I've always appreciated that oh, from the, nice. the end. So that's really great. To have uh, you. I've been lucky. Well. Um, you know, I moved here almost a little, little, little 20, 20 years ago in like three months. And oh. I moved from New York City to Santa Barbara. And I tell people, you know, it took me a couple of years, but as soon as I started reviewing art shows, I suddenly had lots of friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, that was great. Never looked back. Um, it's great. Had a huge positive impact on my life. Uh, Andy, let's, let's talk a little bit about the uh, current show over at, I believe they are the second longest running gallery in downtown over at Sullivan Goss, uh, which is on Annapa Moose Street. Um, Yay. Right close by, you know, uh, uh, just mere steps from Waterhouse. And uh, the show right now, well, there's a few, but uh, Nathan Huff, who's a wonderful artist and a professor at Westmont, has a show. But we're going to talk about Inga Huzait. Am I saying that right, do you think? Yeah? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I'll <laughs> ask her. <laughs> and I know, you know, the version of the story that I got from her. Um, I actually uh, put her, she was in a group show that I curated for the Arts Fund um, back in 20. 19 maybe it was a few years before <laughs> in the before before, before. <laughs> uh, but she has really blown up and i'm just going to describe her work for the people who might be watching who are not familiar um she does uh sculptural portraits that are relief style so they're not um they don't they're not freestanding they, they hang on the wall and they are shaped they're not a square um or a rectangle they're they're, they're kind of an interesting um object in themselves and they are portraits of inspiring women that's what she's been working on mostly for the uh, last few years and I understand she's been collected by the National Portrait Gallery 
of the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. Wow. This is going to go there for a show in 2022. But the cool thing, the kind of angle to it all, is that the way she creates these incredibly beautiful representational slash abstract colorful pieces is by cutting up old skateboard decks. All right, right on. <laughs> and gluing those pieces of old skateboard decks together to make these incredibly intricate uh, collage style reliefs. And right. they're just total genius. And if you've ever been to her studio, it's pretty amazing. Oh no. Decks. Like more than you can believe. <laughs> but fortunately she is part of the skate scene and that's right. how she came to this. So skaters from all over know her from skateboarding in the skate park down on the beach and right. other places, I guess. And so they come and these, a lot of guys, young skater guys <laughs> show up with broken decks. That they know where that's, that's, that's where skateboards go when they die. They become <laughs> portraits of Ruth Bader Ginsburg or Malala or you know all these other wonderful, inspiring right. people. And uh, I just, I, I think she's so amazing and looks like she's really going places because uh, um, her work has been um, getting more attention uh, recently and I think has the potential to be a real kind of breakout star from Santa Barbara. Do you want to talk about how you, you, you said you've known her for a pretty long time too? So is Nathan. Well, it was actually Nathan that had, um, it basically it was like, hey, there's this art show that's happening at the back by the probation department we should go check it out and he took <laughs> some of us to go check it and her sculptures were amazing and they were all yes from from skateboards and what I like is that she really she she leaves you know the designs on there she leaves the color she accents it a little bit and um so we've we've seen her grow from these kind of abstract sculpt sculptures to little characters uh, in my gallery in, in Los Angeles, I wanted to feature her and she, she made a little robot, like a Robbie the robot out of skateboards. And um, yeah, it's really great to see her progress. She is well known outside of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's really good to see her work at home at Sullivan Goss. Yes. Um, I think that has a lot to do with, with Nathan and some of the Nathan and Jeremy and um, Susan, 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 yeah, Susan, to you know, and them being allowed to curate a little different than what was than what Frank had offered, although what Frank offered and they still offer is pretty amazing. And so, yeah, it's really great to see Inga and 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 her be home here. When I when I see her in Sweden or her outside travels, I always worry that she's never going to come back. And she was in LA for a while. But it's so nice that she just loves us so much and she contributes. Um, but yeah, I'm also um, I'm also a collector of Inga's oh. work. And so mm -hmm. I, I work with um, Ferris Customs. They built a Batmobile in 1966. And so I collect Batman stuff. And she created a pink Batman. I'm not sure if you could see it. Yeah. But um, I had to have it. And so um, she held it for oh, me until so cool. I was able to, to collect. But yeah, it's just, um, it's really great to see her. And yeah, and her fans, she's got some pretty, pretty well-known fans um, yeah. in terms. She's got like David Flores is a huge fan of hers and, and really good friends of hers. And so, um, and then just the fact that she's just, she's just, she, you know, she supports other artists. So she supports other art shows. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, she's just, she's just a really good Santa Barbara citizen kind of borrowed, but um, kind of cool. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to our talk with her. Yeah, um, yeah I'm and, gonna tell yeah. Two, two quick Inga stories because I just love them so much. Actually, the first one's just the setup for the second one. The first one is that as a teenager, she was um, challenged in terms of housing and support. And, um, right. you know, she ended up uh, uh, taking care of I believe some of her siblings and really having to move around and basically you know, struggled a bit. And uh, at a certain point, and this is when she's living in Germany, I believe. And at a certain point, she just decided that the most important thing in her life was skateboarding. 
And so she did some research, you know, and, and decided that the place where skateboarding was happening was California, Southern California. And then she did a little more research and she said she was just going to go to Santa Barbara. And she left Europe with very little money uh, and no contacts or anything here other than that she knew that she could skate skateboard here. And she figured that the skateboard community would connect her to the rest of whatever she needed. So that's a like, wow, talk about an American dream. Oh my gosh, that's so, an incredible story. Well, and I'm not done though. This is the best part of the story. So she's here, she starts taking classes in sculpture and painting at Santa Barbara City in College. College. Mm -hmm. And uh, she comes up with this idea to start cutting the skateboards, but she doesn't have the equipment. And so she looks in the uh, internet again, you know, and she finds a woodworking shop on Gutierrez. Do you know this story? Um, it's a good one. And a little bit, yeah. She knocks on the door and says, you know, do you have a, a jigsaw that can cut these things? And the man who answers the door uh, says, yeah, I can help you. And now they're married. <laughs> That's a great story. Oh, wow. Yeah. Meant to be. <laughs> yeah. Great yeah, day. jigsaw. <laughs> that is really great. And her studio is above his woodworking um, shop. And it's a, just an incredible studio visit. I love it. She's one of the best people, I think also, um, and this is great, Andy. Um, I brought a group of students for a studio visit with her and uh, it remains one of the things that whenever I see any of those kids, they always talk about it. Because the, that story, that whole, you know, her journey and then her work was, it made a huge impact on them. You know, with, with her, it's like she's got these wonderful portraits of all these women of power and uh, inspiration, but she herself lives that life. I mean, she's a yeah. woman with a power tool. I mean, and then she's <laughs> she's morphed herself in, in so many different ways, and and she's just like a really great person and gracious, yeah. so Absolutely. definitely she's living that. I'll make sure to, to give her that props when I see her. She, she's got something to say. She's got, and she's got something to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, that was kind of my three-part structure there for that <laughs> sequence. Um, but I uh, am so happy to spend time with my friends from the visual arts community. Uh, you're all doing such a great job. And I think that we're on the verge of maybe some, you know, new excitement over the next uh, couple of years, it feels like there's momentum coming out of this pandemic that is unlike anything that I've ever experienced before. Yeah. And I'm just really thrilled to be part of it as a witness and to try to recognize and acknowledge what people are doing and um, you know, tell their stories and give them credit and, and everything else. But thank you for what you do in terms of making it all possible. Thank you for including us and Andy. Thank Derek's you, going to be painting on the 20th. He'll be oh, in the classroom. Awesome. <laughs> so you have to come and see him. I will. I definitely will. So Robin, are there other things that we need to, uh, to acknowledge or talk about? I'll just do uh, a little bit room. more of a plug for what's happening tonight. So if anyone is listening for the first time and is not familiar with uh, First Thursday Art Walk, it has been going on for more than 10 years uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. every first Thursday of the month. You have an opportunity to see live art, uh, local art, um, music, and sometimes some really phenomenal either new businesses or quintessential uh, local art galleries and museums and also take a, a, a guided walk with Andy to all of the best spots each month. So that's really huge. I want to do a plug for um, the guide, the passport. Um, this is available at all of the different businesses. I'm not going to be able to go into all of the spots, but as you can tell, it's involved. There's a lot of spots. <laughs> Um, two-sided, lots of things happening. There is a map on the back. So if you're watching this live tonight, come on out. We're just about to get out there. It yep. um, starts in an hour. If you're watching this after the fact, make sure you check out our website every month at downtownsb.org uh, to find out what's happening, what Diane and Ralph are doing this month, what Alexandra is doing next month. 
and where Andy is going to take us because it's going to be <laughs> special. Um, tonight, there is a, a few, a new business that is recently opened called Lone Tree. So want to check that out. Um, Courthouse Tavern has not been open that long. So another great place to check out and so many other things. So I just want to give a plug to um, all of those spots. And Ralph's piece is on the front and congratulations <laughs> for that, nice. Ralph. Yay. Yes. And if anybody is curious about actually exhibiting their artwork or a business that's never participated, you can coordinate with our art walk coordinator, April Lee, who is a fabulous. Um, we love April. <laughs> and Emily. She's out there doing her work right now, getting everybody set, situated and set up. So uh, thanks so much all for your support of the art walk all these years. It's a a really established program to support and recognize our local artists, our businesses, and really increase the economic generation for those local artists. So thank you all for that. Um, Charles, tell us anything that's going on with the independent that's coming up. Uh, we have a fun cover, um, not today's paper, but a week from today, I'm working with the writer right now that will be about the exhibit at the Maritime Museum of oh, um, yeah. Ralph Clevenger, who was a teacher at Brooks for many years, would take students uh, scuba diving off the Channel Islands and they would find mermaids out there and photograph oh, yeah. them underwater. And these are amazing photos and they're life size and oh, wow. they're extremely convincing. I'll leave it to you to uh, decide whether those are real or how that happened, but. Um, we're doing a big story on it and I'm really having fun working on it. And so that's just one more interesting art story that's coming up soon in the independent. Oh, great, good stuff. Alexandra, Diana, Ralph, do you have anything coming up you wanna um, put a plug in for? Alexandra, you wanna go first? Sure. Next Thursday, we're actually hosting an artist talk with our exhibiting artist, Roshi Agmai. So if you make it tonight and you're interested in the work or you can't come by tonight, please come. It's in person. Obviously, masks will be required, but it will be really exciting to hear straight from the artist's mouth what her process was and uh, just hear more about her work. So that's Thursday, November 11th from uh, 6 p.m. at the museum. Awesome. Oh, and read about the show in the independent that's on the street right now. Yes. So and then we'd, we'd want to invite all of you to come to our 37th anniversary and watch all those fine artists do uh, oil paintings in the courtyard. And then in December, we'll be selling uh, and highlighting small paintings for this holiday season. <laughs> Lots of local scenes, Butterfly Beach, Henry's Ledbetter Courthouse. Nice. Lots of by, by local page. By local. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's exciting. It's amazing that the holidays are already coming, but I just want, because you mentioned that, we're going to be doing a big kickoff event for um, Small Business Saturday in November, this, uh, November 27th. And we're going to, that'll be the kickoff to the holiday season. And on Thursday through Saturday, um, throughout the whole month of December, we're going to have music and uh, magical happenings throughout downtown. So definitely a lot of stuff going on to look forward to. Well, we're excited. Thank you for including us and for all that you do. And for Charles, your love of art. <laughs> what will we do without you? Absolutely. And it looks like we lost Andy, but thank you, Andy, for all you do all of these years and showing off all of the art walk work. Um, Charles, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up today? I think we're good. Thank you so much. Great to see everybody. Wonderful job today. Absolutely. And enjoy your first Thursday. And one other thing I want to add is next week, um, we'll be back at three o'clock. Um, the next show is about breakfast and brunch downtown. So we're going to be interviewing mm. the uh, owners of D'Angelo Bakery and JJ's mm. Diner. So we're going to have some fun there. And we'll see you next week at three for the Downtown Business Spotlight, where we highlight all kinds of downtown business owners and leaders. And thank you so much, Charles, for hosting uh, today. Alexandra, Diane, and Ralph, for all you do downtown. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.